everyone. My name is Cristina and I'm an Italian that lives in Finland. Now it's been a bit over 10 years since I moved to Finland and uh, I promised to do a video uh, telling about my experience. Uh, why I moved to Finland? I moved to Finland because I love Finland. Uh, uh, it's something that uh, if you never uh, felt this uh, this love you cannot understand it's not like the typical love for a person and uh, how i felt in love with finland uh, well i remember that when i was a kid um, i was watching this uh, cartoon uh, called in Italy Alla scoperta di Babbo Natale and it was my favorite uh, with Hillary but uh, that's another story um, and there was this story about uh, the Santa Claus uh, and the elves uh, so there was the snow and I was always being fascinated by the snow um, then uh, I think it was about 2006 uh, when uh, some of my friends introduced me to uh, certain metal bands and uh, then I discovered that they are all from Finland uh, and I loved those bands and then it was uh, what is in Finland that uh, make those people create so such an amazing music and uh, well, I did my research on Wikipedia and so on, and then I decided I have to visit Finland. So I did. Um, I, I decided to do my first travel. Uh, I think that in 2007, I, I was like, I want to go. But my friends were, let's go next year. So I was like, postpone. Okay, let's go next year. Then. Uh, 2008 uh, I was asking my friends so are you coming to Finland with me and they were all like um, let's see let's see so when I realized that they are not up to come I went to a travel agency and I book the, the travel and uh, so July 2018 I did my first travel to Finland uh, my English was uh, terrible worse than now of course <laughs> and uh, my finish was uh, like zero i just need to, to say like kitos and moi um, that was it i think uh, it was my first travel outside italy alone and the first time that i took a plane airplane so it was um, it was a great experience for myself to um, feel, uh, you know, uh, able to do things by myself that I don't need other people that I can uh, I can manage, and so I did. And uh, when I left uh, uh, Finland after this week, this, this first week, I was like, I need to to get back again. So the first travel was in uh, in Helsinki. The second one was uh, uh, April May two thousand nine in Tampere, and I felt in love with Tampere. Tampere Tampere is, is still my my big love as a city, even if nowadays it's quite different from two thousand nine, but still uh, there is this uh, this special um, feeling. Um, but pretty much in five years i did uh, 12 travels to finland so quite a lot i came during the summer during the spring and during the the winter uh, during the winter i had the chance to even if it's rare in helsinki to have uh, colder colder temperature but still I managed to experience that uh, like uh, the first winter I came it was a uh, minus uh, 25 minus 32 degrees Celsius so yeah I, I, I felt the winter and I loved it uh, and I didn't suffer I remember that I bought above 
yeah, I bought for some something that at the end was not necessary for me. Uh, but then there are people that need. And then of course, if you go to Lapland, for sure you need better better clothes. And uh, during the winter, it's all about clothes. If you have good clothes, then uh, then you are going to manage quite well. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, how I moved to to Finland. Uh, well, uh, 2013. Uh, I before I think that uh, from 2011 I start to to send the uh, curriculums around around Finland around for every pretty much everything that I was up to do. Uh, I remember August, I think it was August 2013, I was just back from Finland and uh, I got an email uh, from Lapland and um, I applied as a cleaner and they contacted me and uh, they, we, we arranged uh, a call so during this call they did this interview and uh, they, they were if you need to to know anything send an email so i sent immediately an email because i was like i want to know um, all the paperwork that you need me to do beforehand but uh, they never replied so i was like okay then it's not i i don't remember if it was for ivalo or Inari, but it was one of those. <laughs> but uh, yeah, wh whatever. Uh, they didn't call me back. I still had my profile active on uh, au pair world, and I remember also for in, as au pair, I I tried to apply to so many families, but uh, probably I was too old because uh, I'm actually uh, thirty. I'm 38, I was almost saying 37, but I'm 38 uh, years old. So back then uh, when I moved, I was 27. So usually, you know, they they prefer to, to take younger people to do this. this. But there was this uh, family from Pori that uh, contacted me if I was interested. So we arranged an interview, a video interview, and then uh, she, the, the mother, uh, told me that, uh, yeah, that for them I was welcome. So that was, uh, s I think it was uh, September, beginning of September, and um, or it was end of August. By the way, it was at some point there. Um, and then uh, I decided to leave everything that I had in Italy to move to Finland, to move to Pori. And uh, yes, I have been to Pori before moving. I was uh, on uh, August 2012 for Pori Spere. I was in Pori two or three days, I don't remember. And I remember walking with my friend Anna. I am uh, telling her that um, you know I could live also here. Um, Anna is uh, another big lover of Finland, and uh, we did several travel together. We actually um, met on MySpace uh, through Sunata Artica's page, I think, if I remember well, and uh, then we met during a gig. And I bet it was apocalyptic a gig, but I may be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. But yeah, uh, so I knew Pori more or less. I did new people in Pori. That, that that was a big thing because before moving, I had friends in uh, Helsinki in the area, Espo, Kirkonummi, and so on. Uh, friends in uh, Tampere, Turku, Hyväskylä. Mikkeli, but uh, not in Pori. So Pori was like a, 
a question mark with knowing people I didn't know anyone and um, well I moved and uh, I had uh, you know everybody was telling me that I'm crazy because I had a good job in Italy I had everything that I need in Italy it was not like a necessity for me so people were like you are crazy like no no one will leave a good job like like this to to move to Finland knowing uh, nothing about what it's come uh, another thing before moving to Finland uh, I I study Finnish uh, because I was like if if I want to move to Finland I need to learn Finnish uh, I have my idea is uh, when someone moves in to, ne to another country uh, this person need to speak to learn the language of the place uh, no one expect you to to speak perfectly but to be able to communicate to integrate integrate to understand the culture and a lot of things uh, without the language you you can live in another country but you will be always the outsider so it's something that I, I don't like. I don't like to be the outsider. Uh, so, or maybe sometimes I like, but yeah, you know, it was not something that, um, that I was up to. I, I want to connect with people. I want to understand uh, things. Uh, and that, that was something important. So I think it was 2009 uh, when I start um, taking uh, private lessons. Uh, actually, I remember I decided to put um, on a journal an announcement, or how, how do you say in English, uh, that I was looking for a Finnish native speaker in uh, Trieste, Monfalcone area. Trieste is where I'm from, and Monfalcone is uh, where I was working back then. Um, and then this lady called me and uh, told me that uh, she will be up and so it was she w she was an amazing uh, person and uh, an amazing teacher and uh, uh, she gave me a lot i i get emotional because uh, she passed away a few years ago but she wa she was she was important for me for uh, for my journey so that's uh, that's that's something that's something that you need to to do before move moving to to a country try to learn the language it's important by the way um i left my job as optician in italy i left everything i had in italy and i just jump jump in a, in a journey that i didn't know if it it was going to work or not because i had the how per contract for three months only so i was like i have three months of time to find a job in finland to be able to stay and um, so i start to do the this au pair job and it was it was fine uh, also i moved to finland at the end of october or was mid-october it was so not not the best time to move let's say that november is the worst month but it was also the most the worst month uh, in italy so i don't like november november is like no by the way sorry if you you were if you were born in november uh, i'm sorry i don't like it uh by the way uh so I remember that I st start sending a curriculum everywhere and uh, I got a call from uh, a cleaning company and um, it, it was at the end of December I got the call I think uh, on the 30 of December and uh, if if I want to go to uh, to do the interview so I did on New Year Eve morning I I went for the interview and uh, then it there was those 
all those paperwork that I had to do. So uh, that morning I went to Maestratti, that is the office where you get the social number. Uh, and then I went to, to Polisi to get reg registration and I paid. Now I don't remember, was it 30 euros or uh, 60 euros? I don't know, I, ca I cannot remember, it's been a while. Uh, and then again to my strati and so, so it was a running, a running morning but um, then I got the job and I start on uh, 7th of January 2014 doing cleaning. Uh, at the beginning uh, I was just doing the morning because uh, at, the same, at a certain time I had to be uh, at home because I was doing au pair job. Uh, at the same time I was looking for uh, for a house and, uh, and yeah, yeah then uh, then there was you know when I moved to Finland uh, my my friend Miriam that is the the boss of a uh, femme metal website asked me if I want to to be part of the uh, of, of the website and I was well I could try so I start to I start to do um, interviews and reviews. The I, I remember that uh, at the beginning I loved to do reviews, and I was like uh, stressing so much about the interviews that I didn't like doing the interviews back then. Uh, nowadays I prefer to do the interviews, uh, not much the reviews. Uh, I don't know. I feel that my my mind. Uh, trick me I mean I have so many ideas when I'm listen listening but then when I have to write they are all gone so that's uh, that's annoying but yeah let's get back to the January so I got the job then I went to to do uh, I went to um, Rock Barmonto that doesn't exist anymore because there was the gig of uh, Battle Beast uh, and before before the gig I had the interview with Nora and she was so sweet and every time that I, I can wait to, to meet her during the summer and uh, have a chat with her but yeah that's another story for another time maybe if you want um, so I went to this gig and then I met uh, my boyfriend that helped me a lot uh, with in particular all the, all this bureaucracy that maybe I would have done something wrong maybe I don't know but it helped me to, to check everything so yeah I find a house uh, it was quite cheap it was small it was I think uh, 21 uh, meter quadrats I'm not sure. It was small. It was small. Um, it was a monolocal, so. Um, but it was cheap. It was two, 260 euros per month, something like this, with light uh, and uh, water all in, uh, inside as price. So it was quite good. But. Uh, it didn't take long that I was I was quite a lot to my boyfriend place so yeah but it's another story uh, from February uh, I start to doing more cleaning uh, places because I had more time available um, yeah during the cleaning time I, I didn't like doing cle cleaning um, maybe it was a bit too much for me in a sense that uh, when it comes to work a job that i'm paid for uh, i like to do perfectly or trying to do as much perfectly as i can and in cleaning uh, in particular when you are uh, in a place uh, that is impossible to keep clean uh, it was it was stressing. Uh, I think that at some point uh, I I experienced burnout. Uh, uh, but uh, let's not talk too much about that because 
I think no one cares now about this. So if you care, I maybe can talk one day. But yeah, at the same time, I try to figure out uh, how uh, could my uh, optician diploma work in, in Finland. And I find out that um, I, had to, I had to contact Valvira. And so I did. I spent money and time. And for three years, I, fa I fought with Valvira because they always keep forgetting my application, my paper things. And then at the end, they were like, OK, n you, you cannot be optician uh, in Finland. You need to go to, for two years to the university in Helsinki. And then I was like, uh, no, I, I don't want to to study something that I have been working. I, I was optician seven years in Italy. Uh, I understand that uh, there are differences uh, uh, because uh, uh, to become optician in Italy, uh, you need just uh, to do the professional uh, secondary school. If I'm, it's a professional institute. So it was five years. Uh, uh, after the the basic school, the eight year basic school, there was those five years. Uh, while in Finland, you you need to go to this Amatikorka Koulu, so um, uh, University of Applied Science. And then I was like, uh, if I'm going to study something, I'm going to study something else, something that. Uh, I wanted before and uh, it was a physiotherapy uh, because uh, I remember when I was teenager I was uh, fascinating fascinating fascinated uh, by physiotherapist uh, job so I was like yeah in Pori there is the opportunity to study also in English I I speak fluently in Finnish there is uh, this big accent but yeah, I speak fluently, but at, at the beginning there was this idea that I will try both English and Finnish and let's see in which one I get in. Uh, but then when I, when I start to study for the entrance exam, uh, it was too tiring because I was, I remember in the morning uh, working as a cleaner and studying at the, those uh, bone things because we had the, the, the entrax exam based on bone. And um, yeah, so then I gave up on the, on the Finnish part. So I was cleaner for five years. Uh, in 2000, uh, January 2018, I applied uh, to, to get to the entrax exam for physiotherapy uh, in English degree program. Uh, then on April 2018, uh, I did the entrance, entrance exam. And uh, yeah, I was sure that I didn't pass. Uh, because, you know, uh, in the morning, uh, uh, we had the, the, um, the writing exam. And I was prepared for that, so I think that it went well. Uh, then we had the interview, so I did the interview, and uh, I was myself, so it went well. I think well, it went well. But then there was the practical part, and uh, if uh, let's say that seventy percent of it went well, but there was one. Uh, we had to teach to each other something, some, something, like some exercise, and to guide. And uh, I remember that we had to pick two paper. Uh, on one paper, there was the the body part that was that you have had to to do the exercise exercise for, and on the other well, there was uh, um, the the equipment. So I got as equipment uh, the directional mat that I have 
never used in my life. I still to know what, what directional mat is, but yeah. And then uh, I got upper limbs. And my poor English was like, what the hell upper limbs is? My, my brain didn't connect. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing, but so I guide exercises, but it was for lower limbs. So, yeah, I was sure that when I asked to one of the one of the guy that was doing the entrance entrance exam with me, uh, what does uh, upper limbs mean? And he showed me the arms. I was like, fuck. Oh, sorry, I cannot say that. I was like, now now I missed my opportunity. So then there was just the waiting of knowing if I got in. I remember in June, my friend Tele, that was that I met during the entrance exam, uh, told me I got in, uh, uh, what about you? And then I was, I didn't receive any email. So probably I, I'm not in. Then I went to check from Opinto Polku. I think it's when the, the study thinks, I, I'm not sure how to describe it. Uh, but I went there and uh, I saw that I got in, that I was one of the chosen ones, so I was so happy. I think um, if knowing that I was moving to Finland was uh, one of the happiest day, happiest, happiest day in my life, uh, knowing that I was going to study physiotherapy, that I got in was uh, the second one really bi the, the big a bit the big step so so then uh, end of august 2018 i start to study physiotherapy um we were a great team we are um ph 18 uh, we are we were all finnish half uh, ranger and uh, i i had the time of my life uh, it was it was uh, really nice uh, and um, great people to to share those those moments um, it was a February 2019 when I decided to leave um, the cleaning job and it was also because uh, on January I start to coach gymnastics artistic yeah. gymnastics uh, when I was a kid from 6 to 19 years old um, gymnastic was my life uh, I I was not on elite level um, my dream was to get to elite level to train every day at least four hours per day and to go to go to do uh, championship and so on and get to the national team and get to the Olympics um, that didn't happen uh, it broke my heart but that's another story for another time i start as uh, an assistant coach and um, yeah i'm still doing sometimes uh, coaching but uh, i most of the time i don't have any more time so i i'm thinking uh, should i stop completely or not I, I don't know, the, it, it's like, you know, it's difficult because I, I love it, but at the same time, uh, I cannot get uh, in the gym because I'm working, so it's a bit tricky. But yeah, beside that, uh, while I was doing uh, my third clinical practice, uh, um, they asked me, it was in a uh, elderly house and they asked me if when I get enough credits from from university if I can uh, go there and uh, do substitution so I did so I start to to do substitutions uh, I think it was uh, February or March and the clinical practice was over on October. I think something like this. So I went a few times sometimes then during the summer, then yeah, I was doing some substitutions, 
doctor in the elder house when uh, the physiotherapist was on holiday or other things. So that was uh, the first experience as a physiotherapist. Then I remember uh, I graduated on time. It was December 2021. Uh, I did my my thesis and I'm still proud that I did because um, if I look back uh, in time when I was a child, um, no one believed that uh, I could, you know, I could do something in my life. I, I was... Uh, I was very bad at school as a child. Um, I'm a dreamer, so most of the time when teachers were talking, uh, I I was in my in my world. So no one was expecting that uh, little Christina is going to move to Finland, learn uh, um, Finnish, and uh, graduate as a physiotherapist in English and write write the thesis in English. <laughs> that's that's a big point. Um, but yes, I did, and um, the, the thesis uh, was uh, physiotherapy in the management of uh, visually impaired clients. Um, you can find it uh, on um, Theseus. So, if someone wants to want to to read it, welcome. <laughs> but um, then I pretty much got the job that I'm doing now fast. <laughs> it was fast because I sent the, the CV, I went to the um, interview and then uh, at the end of the month, December 31, uh, I got the call that uh, I got the job. Um, I had another job in case if this one was not not going to happen but it was in a elderly house in Rauma so it was you know Rauma is a bit uh, distant from from Ulvi I live in Ulvila that is eight I'm I live at eight kilometers from the center of Bori so it's really close um, Rauma is a bit uh, it's a bit a longer distance so every day in Rauma that could be a bit tiring but there are people that are doing it and when I was in Italy in Italy I was at the beginning doing my job uh, I was traveling for doing for my job so but I I will be not not that up to do it anymore um, yeah so I got my job and uh, I'm a physiotherapist uh, and uh, um, mostly of my mo most of my patients are uh, neurological um, chronic neurological so not uh, acute phase so rehabilitation um, but I have also muscle skeletal issues uh, clients and then massage clients uh, so yeah uh, every day at work is is different. It's not boring, and uh, I I still love Finland. I'm happy. You know, Finland is the happiest country in the world. Even if uh, the word happy is, you know, it's tricky. Mm -hmm. I think I, I think that when they, it's more about satisfaction, and I think that uh, of course people are, or I don't know, but I. I am satisfied with my life. Yes, of course, there is not a perfect country in this world, but I, I love to be in Finland. Um, I, I'm not complaining about anything, or well, sometimes I complain, uh, but uh, not nothing, nothing big. Um, every country has its own pro and con so you choose one country but no, you will not find everything perfect because perfection doesn't exist um, the important thing is that you 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 feel to you know to feel you, you feel the place you are enough happy 
and uh, that you feel good that you are living your life um, and Finland uh, was my dream that became true and through Finland uh, I realized a lot of dreams so um, interviewing band taking photos of, of bands going to the backstage <laughs> Uh, taking pro pro promo photos of bands, um, being in the photo pit, uh, uh, meeting certain artists, um, then uh, becoming a gymnastic coach uh, and becoming a physiotherapist. Uh, and you know, I still have, I still have uh, dreams, and there are still things that uh, I don't know if they are going to happen, but. Uh, life teach me that uh, uh, everything come when the time is ready so I want to believe that uh, those dreams maybe are coming true one day uh, so uh, I keep on believing and dreaming and uh, and working towards my my dreams but now I want to to answer to the questions and now they are in Italian, Finnish, English so I'm going to answer in the language that they they ask so I, I took down the, the, the question here on the computer and then on the phone uh, but let's go on the Facebook so Luca Cimatoribus asks Così su due piedi? Mm, eccola, perché proprio la Finlandia e non un altro paese simile? Bella domanda, non lo so perché prima di trasferirmi ho fatto dei viaggi in Finlandia e la prima volta che ho messo piede in Finlandia me ne sono innamorata e è un sentimento, una sensazione che non posso spiegare, per questo la Finlandia e non la Svezia o la Norvegia o quel che sia, quindi... Questa è la risposta alla tua domanda. Then we have uh, Jessica Carli. Mi conosco praticamente tutta la storia, ma, una, ma una, una domanda saria. Metti a confronto due culture diverse e relativo adattamento. Oddio, culture italiane e finlandese sono abbastanza diverse. Um, in Finlandia si è più riservati, in Italia si è più casinisti, dai. Uh, tutto la va bene che la va là, ma sì, dai, va bene così. Qua invece si tende ad essere un poco più precisi. Che uh, se tante differenze, che ne se tante, uh, però adesso su due piedi non so che proprio mi viene, che, di, che differenze, che ne se, che ne se, ehm, però... Dipende, non ti ha specificato che differenza co esattamente cosa che te vuole sapere. Then there is uh, Tom Missarinen. Si ta un yomoni ti etusti kusin et eta mix pah di mutaman specificesti su omen, io tentar che nan tuosta lisa. Miten mixi pah di et juri lansi su omen, eri tu isesti kun poria, ja sen napuri kun ti atypilisesti suositilan ennen pa valtaman. Sitten vielä toinen, jos matkaisit ajassa ta taksenpain ja kohtaisit sen version itse asti nyt, joka on juuri pattamassa mutta Suomen, ja kertoisit tähän, tähän asti asti, sorry, tähän, tähän astista kokemuksesta, kokemuksista asi Suomessa asumisesta hänelle. Mitä luulisit sen Kristiinan ajattelevan? Entä mitä vinkkejä neuvoja antaisit hänelle? No, oikeasti hyvä kysymys. No, sä kuulit jo se englannin versio alussa tästä, tästä videossa. Um, Miksi? Pori. Mä tulin niin kuin au pair. Ja sitten mä jäin tänne. Ja nyt mä oon Hulvilassa ja kyllä pori, po, pori on pori ja porilaiset ovat porilaiset, mutta mu pori on kaunis, niin en mä valita. Pori on pieni, mutta on kaikki, mit... 
on melkeinkään kaikki mitä tarvitsee. Vielä jos olisi kunnon rockklubi niin kuin aikana oli, olisi parempi, mutta yritetään parjata. Ainakin saa, saa ottaa nyt tekemässä hyvä, hyvä töitä metallimusiikkilla. Me, niin, että jatka näin. Uh, jos menisi takaisin ajassa, uh, mä voisin kertoa se 2013 Kristiinalle, että te kaikki mitä sä arvat, että, että se on ihan oikea patos. Et, että elämä antaa pian paljon ennenpä. Ja ala pelkä. Ja ala kuuntele mitä muut sanovat. Vain seuraa mitä sun sydäme saa. Semmonen mä voisin siis sanoa. Ja vinkkiä. Kristiina Kariste- 2013. Ei, sille ei tarvitse mitään vinkkiä, koska on, an on osannut. An osa, jo. An osasi silloin. Joo. Then there is a Paula Makulus. Jos sono curiosa, da sapere cosa ti ha spinto. Bella scelta di trasferirti. Uh, la scelta de po- del posto è come è stata l'accoglienza e il tuo inserimento all'inizio. Um... Allora, come avrai già sentito in, uh, in questo video, uh, la scelta del posto è stata dettata da, da all'inizio la musica, al metal, uh, quindi a gruppi che ascoltavo e che mi hanno fatto incuriosito, mi hanno fatto scoprire la Finlandia, eh, mi hanno fatto viaggiare in Finlandia, dove mi sono innamorata del paese e, e quindi da lì è partito il tutto. Uh, la, l'accoglienza all'inizio, diciamo che uh, trasferendomi a Pori, non è stata così facile nel senso che non conoscevo nessuno a Pori, quindi era difficile fare amicizia e le persone a Pori sono un po' più chiuse, se vogliamo. Si aprono un po' alla volta, hanno bisogno di tempo. Quindi sì, quindi l'inizio è stato un po', un po arduo, ma poi col tempo adesso ho amici, e però sono diventata un po' un orso che... Non è che ho sempre voglia di, di essere sociale, forse perché lavoro con la gente ogni giorno e quindi ogni tanto nei weekend ho voglia solo di stare a casa e cazzeggiare. Eccola. Then we go to, to Instagram. And, uh, and let's see. So, Stevie Drifter asks, how did you learn the language? As you heard Uh, before in this video, I I took lesson lesson to to learn Finnish. Then there is uh, FNC Pasetu, and it's in Italian. Se tutto va secondo i miei piani, l'anno prossimo mi ci trasferisco. Consigli obbligatori. Allora, uh, se non l'hai già fatto, prima di trasferirti fatti uno o più viaggi in Finlandia. Secondo, impara la lingua. Terzo, informati come trovare lavoro e tutta la burocrazia uh, prima. Uh, questi sono i consigli. Eh, non farti troppe aspettative, perché tante volte certi italiani si fanno tante aspettative senza conoscere il paese senza, senza averlo visitato prima e poi restano un po' male. Uh, se vai su Facebook, sul gruppo degli italiani in Finlandia, lì ogni tanto ci sono persone che si lamentano, però ecco, magari informati un po' meglio e non farti troppe aspettative. Um, then there is uh, Yenku Piesanen. What was hard at the beginning, but now just a normal life? Uh, I think that the the food <laughs> the food is a bit different. Um, you know, just just a bit. 
<laughs> coming from Italy to Finland, but uh, I think that I gain weight when I move to Finland <laughs> because I changed the diet. And but I have heard that uh, it happened also to Finnish people moving to Italy. So when you change the diet that you have had for uh, for your whole life, um, then then there are, there is some you know there's some changing. There are some changing. Um, what else? Um, I don't know. Also, going with the, riding the bike uh, with the snow and uh, the ice. Nowadays, I'm not doing that anymore. But I have been doing that for for a long. Uh, eating at a certain time, like having lunch uh, at ten in the morning or eleven, and uh, having uh, dinner at four five. So this is normal now, but. Uh, when I moved, it was not um, about the break. I I will say also breakfast, but I actually I have never been a big person with breakfast. Also nowadays, I eat bread without nothing on it. That for most of things is like oh you have to put stuff on it. But I just bread and uh, drink tea and eat my yogurt. So. In Italy, I was just drinking water, so it's a, it's an improvement. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. Um, I'm think I'm thinking it's it's not easy. Uh, there are weird things that they are still weird. For example, uh, do, okay, uh, I haven't I haven't been to that many funerals, but uh, during the funeral, uh, for me, it was weird that there was. The photographer taking photos and um, yeah that that was something weird but in Italy is even weirder because you can have the the uh, what's the the name not the grave the sarcog of open and uh, you can go and to say hi to the to the dead person there so yeah, it's a, it's a bit uh, it's a bit different, but yeah, maybe maybe we talk of something more more fun. Is some something else? Uh, I I'm I'm not sure. Maybe if something came in my mind, I can uh, do an up update. Uh, then there is a uh, Tony Tervonen. Mia lipide sua malaise sta ruosta. Mika arvo sana sille paras ravinto la sua messa. No niin, tämä on vaikea. Paras ravinto la Suomessa. En mä oikeasti tiedä, en mä ole kiertänyt koko Suomea. Paras, paras ravinto la Porissa. Mikä on paras ravinto la Porissa? Jossain kohtaa oli Torget, mutta nyt Torget meni toisen nimiselle ja ei ole enää se. Andalusia on aika hyvä. Ja sitten puhutaan lounaspaikka. Mä tykkään kuitenkin Sofiasta. Ja suomalainen ruoka. Se on hyvä. Ei kaikki. Mutta varsinkin jouluruoka. Mä tykkään tosi paljon lantulaatiko ja se kinku. Kinku on aina hyvä. No porkana laatiko, peruna laatiko, kyllä käy. Ja Karjalan paisti on mun lempi. Se on oikeasti hyvä. Ja ihan paras. Välillä, tiedät, mä, mä oon semmonen keittoiminen. Ja en mä taju miksi joka keitossa pitää pitä laita jotain kermaa. Toi on tai liia. Miksi? Se voi olla myös ilman niitä, mutta välillä mä teen oma, oma italialainen versio keitot, niin että siellä ei ole mitään, mitään liha tai, uh, tai kerma tai vastaavia. Uh, arvosana. Mä, mä oon vähän huono tästä, koska mä, mä, rakastan, <laughs> mä rakastan ruoka. Uh, mä syön aika paljon. 
se, se, se on astavaa. Et jos kympi on maksimi, uh, sanoisin, että on muut maat, missä ruoka on mielenkiintoisempi, niin antaisiko 6-7? Joo, joku seitsemän. Ainakin oma maku mukaan se menee aika hyvin. Uh, uh, niin kuin paras ravintola Suomessa, sorry. Uh, sanoisin nyt, mä heitä. Helsingissä aino, jos on vielä. En tiedä. Mä muistan, että silloin mä tykkäsin tosi paljon, oli tosi hyvä. Niin, et. Mutta en tiedä. Pitäisi mennä ympäri Suomen. Syömään. So, those were the questions. And, um, yeah, this is uh, pretty much the, the video about my story in Finland. And uh, uh, if you want to know something more, if you want me to talk about some something specific, uh, please write in the comment. Uh, if you are into metal music, uh, um, subscribe to my channel uh, and check out my uh, metal pizza talk show and also the interview that i do for the offering website and um, if you are into into photos of concert uh, just check me out on the on instagram clicks uh, 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 4e um, yeah that's all i hope you enjoy this this story and my chatting and uh, yeah see you <laughs>